For our topic, we were assigned the Alexander Mosaic, Trajan's Column, and the Ludovici Battle Sarcophagus. All three of these works are from ancient Rome, and all three are very unique in their own ways. Now, here's a little background about Roman society. At the time, male citizens were supposed to participate in military service, and oftentimes, one's property would reflect their status in the military. If they were an important figure, they would often have a larger plot of land. If you were less important, your land would reflect it. If you had no land before your military life, you would be turned down because only land-holding citizens could participate in military service. As Rome continued to expand, the amount of people who were capable of owning land increased, and as a result, more figures in the military were able to receive land. Additionally, within the military, men were divided into classes because each man needed to provide their own equipment for battle. Since only the people with money were able to afford the correct necessities to actually fight in the battles, they were the first picks and they were also the soldiers who would be most likely to win. Now you may ask, why only let the wealthy Romans serve? The government believed at the time that these men had a lot to lose and therefore would have more motivation. Additionally, during the civil wars, a large number of citizens would be involved, and as they rose in the ranks of the military, they also rose in the ranks of Rome. After a wartime duty, veterans would also be eligible to receive land and benefits, and the leaders of old troops may become leaders of certain areas. As one can see, participation in wars and battles greatly impacted Roman society itself and the way that individuals were regarded in this society. The first work that we are going to talk about is the Alexander Mosaic. The Alexander Mosaic is a Roman floor mosaic located in the House of Fawn in Pompeii, Italy, where the ash from a volcanic eruption helped to preserve this work. Additionally, the work is massive and measures 2.72 meters by 5.13 meters, or about 9 by 16 feet. Since the mosaic is quite large, it demonstrates how the Romans saw war as something that was very important to the society. The mosaic is made up of tesserae, which are small pieces of glass or stone that can be cut into a desired size or shape. As one can see in this image, the closer you get to the image, the more the overall picture becomes less cohesive and the individual parts are more evident. Making a mosaic is a very complicated process that requires a lot of attention to detail. Since the artist was willing to do this, it shows how the Roman society saw war in a good way and saw it as something that needed to be preserved and something that should receive a lot of attention in detail. Through various historical accounts, we generally understand that this mosaic is heavily inspired by a 3rd century Hellenistic Greek painting that no longer exists. The work is thought to depict the Battle of Isis of 333 BCE, where Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia went head to head. Many people, however, believe that this mosaic could depict the Battle of Glogomala, where Alexander and Darius III clashed again. Since the mosaicists chose to recreate a work depicting a battle, one can understand that war is very important to this society, and that it is something that deserves the attention. Additionally, one can understand that the Romans believe that this battle should be remembered for centuries to come. To the left of the image, we can see Alexander the Great seated atop a horse. Despite being involved in a battle, we can see that he is calm and confident and he is not wearing a helmet. Despite this, we understand that he has a lot of power and control because he is marching into a battle and still calm about it. Additionally, we see Alexander the Great injure one of Darius' soldiers known as the Invincibles. Through this, we can understand that the leaders of the Romans in war were very powerful and dedicated to their soldiers. Additionally, one can see that the Romans viewed their leaders as strong and intelligent individuals who were capable of leading the Romans into battle and for holding their own in society. We can also see that Darius is in the process of retreating from the battle and that unlike Alexander, he looks somewhat shaken. From this, we can understand that the Romans believed they were stronger and more in control of their enemies during wartime, especially when they were winning the battle. Similar to many other works, this also depicts Alexander facing a worthy opponent, which additionally makes them appear stronger as a society and as an army. By using the foreshortening technique, we can understand the care that was associated with depicting battle scenes and how important battles were to the societies that they needed to put all of this time and skill into creating them. By creating a detailed replica of the original work, it also demonstrates how important war was and how highly regarded in this society it was, because while they could have chosen to depict the battle simply, they instead chose to incorporate a lot of details. To conclude, we can see how war is shown and how it was very important to the society at the time. Since Alexander the Great is calm and collected, we are able to understand how the Romans believed he was the leader of a powerful empire. Additionally, since there are many small details, we are able to see that war was important to the society because they took the time to make it that way in the mosaic. Additionally, since the mosaic was created for a home and not for a government building, for example, where thousands of people would see it every day, this demonstrates how the common citizens were deeply invested and cared for the war. Additionally, even though many were required to serve in Roman and Greek societies, they are still brought up to support the war, regardless of the casualties and fatalities that are depicted. By showing a leader going into war unprotected against the leader of another massive empire, we can understand that Romans are willing to stand up and protect what is theirs at whatever cost. They are not scared to fight for what is theirs, and they will do whatever is necessary to win. 
Finally, we can see how war is deeply ingrained into the society and how there is a natural defensive tone through the society through the way that war is depicted in many works throughout homes and other important buildings. Our next work is Trajan's Column, designed by Apollodorus of Damascus and located in Trajan's Forum in Rome. The work is dedicated to Trajan and glorifies his leadership and military victories. The column stands at 128 feet tall and consists of a continuous frieze spiraling up the column, depicting the victory of the Romans over the Dacians. The theme of this work is the triumph of civilization over barbarians. The Roman warriors in the frieze are depicted as civilized, clean-shaven, well-dressed, orderly, and uniformed. This suggests that Roman soldiers were highly valued and praised members of society. Dacians, on the other hand, are depicted as barbarians, shaggy, disorganized, and wearing leggings, which was for some reason associated with barbarians? Question mark. Furthermore, the base of the column served as Trajan's tomb in which his ashes were placed. In Roman society, emperors were buried inside the city. Romans believed that emperors became gods after death through a process called apotheosis. This shows that Trajan and his victories were praised and celebrated in Roman society as he was seen as a godlike figure leading the Romans to victory. In order to better understand this work, we will briefly discuss the Dacian Wars themselves. There were two Dacian Wars fought between the Romans and the Dacians who were located in present-day Romania and Moldova as well as small parts of a few other surrounding countries. The wars were caused by Dacia's threat to the Danubian border and Rome's economic trouble and need for more resources. A, histor a historical account written by Cassius Dio, a Roman statesman and historian, provides important details about the wars. In the Roman history books, which were a collection of 80 books written between the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE, Cassius Dio states, quote, Trajan, having crossed the Ister by means of the bridge, conducted the war with safe prudence rather than with haste, and eventually, after a hard struggle, vanquished the Dacians, end quote. This quote gives insight into Trajan as a leader and his skillful military tactics, which eventually led to the glorification and celebration of his victories. Ultimately, the column of Trajan reinforces the idea that war played a significant role in Rome, in that the soldiers and military leaders were viewed as high-ranking members of society and victories were celebrated. Found at a tomb near Porta Tibertina, the Ludovici battle sarcophagus is made of white marble and is created using a drill, allowing for the sculptors to add lots of detail. As you can see, this is a high relief sculpture with lots of the figures almost completely disconnected from the base. Throughout the whole piece, there is a lot of movement, which tells the viewers that it is a narrative piece. The sarcophagus displays dozens of stories through the individual interactions between the figures. At some places, this piece even has four layers of figures on top of each other. Now taking a closer look at the figures. Looking towards the bottom, we can see that the figures are physically smaller, which makes the viewer feel like they are looking down upon them. The sculptor uses shields and other aspects to frame and intentionally highlight certain figures. Because this is a high relief sculpture, the shadows that are created with the multiple layers of carving allows for the contrast of light and darkness to guide the viewer's eye. Taking a closer look at the Romans specifically, we can see that they are clearly depicted as noble soldiers and this can be clearly seen through their appearance. They have attractive characteristics, serious expressions, and smooth skin. On the other hand, the barbarians were depicted as the enemy. For example, their puffy cheeks and noses, wild expressions, uncivilized primitive features, and rough uneven skin showed how they were disdainfully displayed. Once again, we can see how in Roman society, war was glorified and how the Romans took much pride in their battles. 
Looking towards the top center of the sarcophagus, we can spot the hero. He is the clear focal point, which is evident by the only somewhat open space in the midst of all the tangled mess. He is depicted as a strong, open-chested, and fancy man draped in heavy armor. Because he has no weapon or helmet, he is almost depicted as though he is invincible. The sarcophagus was created at a time in Roman history which was marked by instability and civil wars, and preceded by stability and peace, which is shown through the chaotic and complex nature of this piece. We see how this work shifts away from classical Greek art, where the focus is more on beauty of the human body, and gears towards the interactions between people. We can also see some Hellenistic characteristics, as evident through the people's emotions. During the second century, we see sarcophagi start to appear more commonly. Though it is unknown who the Ludovici battle sarcophagus actually belongs to, we can assume that it was a person who possessed great wealth and power because they were able to buy such a large slab of marble and hire such highly skilled sculptors. We can assume that during this time, tombs and sarcophagi of this magnitude would only be for the most powerful or wealthiest members of society. This is very similar to a work that we learned about from the ancient Egypt unit. Looking at the image, we can see that this work is called Tutankhamun's tomb. Other than the obvious fact that both are funerary pieces of art, both draw important comparisons about society. This tomb belonged to the former king of Egypt. By examining the materials that were used to construct the tomb, we can see the immense amount of wealth that this king possessed. Expensive materials such as 22 pounds of gold and many semi-precious stones were used to construct this tomb. Both works are similar in the fact that only the wealthiest members of society would be able to afford something this extravagant. Additionally, inside the curriculum, we studied the winged Nike Asamathres, which is symbolic of a naval victory. Additionally, the entirety of the Athenian Acropolis was built to celebrate the Greek victory in the Persian War. The frieze on the Temple of Nike Athena also depicts the Battle of Marathon. Finally, the inside of the Parthenon also depicts several battle scenes, including Amazonomachy, Gigantomachy, and Centauromachy. All of these works show battles that depict war and were created by societies that were deeply invested in these battles. By choosing to create them, we can understand that war was very important in these societies. Now we will touch upon some of the out-of-curriculum works that relate to the three works that we are covering today. This statue is called Alexander the Great Monument and is located in Thessaloniki, a Greek port city. This relates to the Alexander Mosaic as it depicts the same person, however, in a completely different manner. Alexander the Great is credited with extending the Macedonian influence in Greece. This statue was created by Evangelos Moustakas and was unveiled in 1973. Although it is a modern work, the statue is closest to Greek classical style. Alexander the Great's face shows little expression and he seems quite aloof. Additionally, the statue lacks the movement and fluidity associated with Hellenistic works. As you can see, although the horse is in motion, the cape behind Alexander does not appear to be flowing or made of real cloth. You can tell it is a sculpture. However, it is quite an impressive sculpture standing nearly 20 feet tall. The Arch of Titus was erected around 81 CE at the foot of the Palatine Hill in Rome. The work is a good example of a triumphal arch a traditional Roman architectural work meant to commemorate military victories or prominent events in history. This particular arch celebrates the victory of Vespasian and Titus in the First Jewish-Roman War, during which Jerusalem was sacked. The Arch of Titus was erected by Domitian, who was Vespasian's son and Titus's brother. The side panels of the arch consist of sculptures depicting the raiding of Jerusalem's temple as well as Titus riding a chariot and being crowned victorious. A small frieze runs the entire arch and depicts the entire triumphal procession. 
The Arch of Titus serves as a religious and political statement as it represents Titus as divine thanks to his victory in the war. This proves the reoccurring theme that military victories were highly celebrated and valued in Roman society. The Arch of Titus relates to the Column of Trajan in that both works glorify war and depict their respective emperors as godlike beings. This is because in Roman society, leaders were deemed successful based on their military achievements, and these accomplished leaders were compared to gods. Since both Trajan and Titus were popular and had major military victories, both received monuments in their names. The sarcophagus depicting a battle between soldiers and Amazons is a Roman piece of art designed to be the resting place of a Roman military officer. The sculpture depicts Roman soldiers clothed in traditional armor fighting Amazonian women. The hierarchical scale is a prominent feature in this work as the size of the Roman soldiers is comparable to that of the horses, suggesting that these soldiers held high-ranking positions in society. This work is similar to that of the Ludovisi battle sarcophagus. Both have the same function, to act as a final resting place for a body. Both works also depict scenes of war and have a crowded design, with people placed one on top of the other. However, the Ludovisi battle sarcophagus is a bit more crowded than this one. Also, we see how the Roman soldiers are depicted as heroic, whereas the enemy, the Amazons, are shown as weak, similar to the barbarians in the Ludovisi battle sarcophagus. In all of the works that were examined, we see how the Romans glorified war, showed Roman superiority, and their method of using horses and large infantries to fight in war. The Greeks and Romans constantly showcased themselves as idealized heroes and their enemies as weak. The Romans used lots of intricate and complex details and were heavily influenced by Greek art. They also show a much higher level of skill and craftsmanship than seen in previous past cultures, showcasing how highly developed their society was. Overall, these pieces serve as evidence that show viewers the integral role war had in ancient Greek and Roman societies. Therefore, one can understand that war had enormous impacts on the societies that we have studied in this unit. While we only briefly touched the surface of this theme, there are so many other works that display the idea. Thanks for watching!